Hi everybody, it's Miss Stephanie and it's Friday. It's time for family story time. I'm so glad you're here again. I'm really excited to read these new books I picked out today. Um, and I have a big stack right here on the floor by me. But before we read anything, we need to say hello to each other. So can you warm up your hands and get ready to wave? We wave hello like this. We wave hello like this. With all our friends at story time, we wave hello like this. Hello! Well, I'm using a different camera, so I'm gonna try to make sure that you can see all the pictures because I'm a little farther away. But I think it'll be okay. Let's start with this one. It's called Your Future is Bright. And it's written by Corey Finkel and illustrated by Shelley. <laughs> it's a hard to pronounce last name. It's pretty French. And I don't know if they pronounce it in the French way or in an anglicized way. So Cuvillon maybe? Anyway, the pictures are really pretty and that's some that's part of it I'm super excited about. So your future is bright. <clears throat> Today is a triumph. It's awesome. You're great. The things you've accomplished are truly first rate. Your efforts have made you stand out from the crowd, so puff out your chest. You deserve to be proud. Amazing adventures are coming to you, and people are eager to see what you'll do. Your future is waiting. Which path will you choose? There's no way to know, but there are a few clues. As soon as you get out of bed every day, you're bursting with energy, ready to play. You run at full speed as you zip place to place, a grin of delight plastered over your face. <clears throat> So maybe tomorrow we'll get to behold your fearless attempt as you race for the gold. Or maybe you'll earn adoration and fame in basketball, soccer, or some other game. But while there's a chance you'll be known for your feet, the list of your options is far from complete. Your eyes and your ears are incredibly strong. No secret can ever stay hidden for long. So maybe you'll be a detective or spy discovering secrets as people walk by. Can you see? <laughs> and then there's your very refined sense of taste. It's such, it'd be such a shame if that skill went to waste. You could be a baker devising new sweets to serve in a diner where everyone You have an artistic and passionate soul, and that could be how you discover your role. You might write a novel that's loved and adored, or star, or star in a movie that wins an award. You might paint a masterpiece stunning and grand. Or play lead guitar in a rock and roll band. You're saddened whenever a classmate gets hurt. If someone were freezing, you'd give them your shirt. Perhaps you'll find happiness taking the lead, committing yourself to help people in need. <clears throat> if you see injustice, you don't kid around. You fight for what's right until answers are found. Tomorrow you might offer voters a choice to opt for a leader who gives them a voice. This may be what happens, but then maybe not. Your interests might alter. It happens a lot. Professor, biologist, architect, nurse, astronomer probing the whole universe, accountant, mechanic, librarian, vet, or something that nobody's thought to do yet. <laughs> Whatever you choose, it will always seem smart as long as you follow your generous heart. When someone needs kindness, you answer the call, and this tells us maybe the best news of all. No matter what path you select in the end, you'll always be known as a wonderful friend. Don't ever stop dreaming and set your sights high. Tomorrow will come in the blink of an eye. So follow your instincts to do what feels right. And you can be sure 
that your future is bright. And that's the end. Did you like that one? I really enjoyed reading it. <coughs> okay, here is another book. It's um, by the same person who wrote and illustrated Colette's Lost Pet, but this one's called Maya's Big Scene. So it's written and illustrated by Isabel Arsenault. Here it is. Let's see. Oh, this is going to be fun. So they're in the backyard again. I need a hat. I need a gown. I need a cape. Wait, 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 wait. Before we do this, I think we should rehearse a little bit more. Well, it seems like they're going to be putting on a play. Really? But we've been practicing all day. I know, but just one more time to make sure everything is perfect. <clears throat> I want my play to stand out. I want it to be famous. I want it to be big. Come on, everyone. We can do this. Fine. All right. So let's start at the revolution scene. Jimmy, you stand here, and Tom, you go over there and ride in on your horse. Now, please, quiet, everyone. Shh. <clears throat> Time. <clears throat> he says, times are changing. I can feel it. The wind is turning. King Jimmy, the queen wants... To start a revolution, what should we do? Uh-oh, beware. Okay, girls, that's your cue. We come in peace. We want respect. We want freedom. We want equality. In the queendom. <clears throat> Terrific. We'll add a little chorus after that part. Lucas and Scott could join in and throw some confetti in the background. What do you think? Um, I think that... Now let's start looking at the costumes. Yay! All looking in the trunk. <clears throat> Ooh, look at this dress. I love the colors. Cool shoes. Where's my suit? Is this my hat? I'm not wearing these. And they're still trying to figure things out. So, Tom, here's your cape. Beth, that's your dress. Musketeers, you are wearing these. Jimmy, this is your suit. Colette, that's yours. Who wants this? Um, I think that. All right, get in your costumes, everyone. She's not really listening to her friends. She's being a little bit. She's making a lot of decisions. Wait a minute, are you telling me that this is my king's costume? This, this pink thing? What's wrong with pink? I don't like pink, he says. Well, in my queendom, that's what the king is wearing. <clears throat> and what about my shoes? Musketeers don't wear these sort of shoes. Well, in my queendom, they do, she says. This is ridiculous. What kind of play is this, a comedy? Jeez, I'm out. Uh-oh. Well, in my queendom, I decide when it's time to leave. And their friends look shocked. Bang! She slams the gate so no one can go. <coughs> you can see everybody looking around like, what do we do? Listen up, people! I've got a proclamation. She went up on the balcony. Who will ride this horse for me? Who will go on this great adventure with me? Who will build this queendom alongside me? Who will conceive of this land of freedom, respect, and equality with me? Get back on your horse. Up, up. You two open the ball and dance for the queen. Move it and you tell us some jokes. Cheer up the crowd. Now. Come on, people. Laugh, laugh. We have fun in my queendom. More fun. Ha, 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 ha. They're laughing, sort of. <clears throat> That's better. Now let's celebrate the queen's triumph. Bring me beautiful flowers and sweets. I want a fanfare of trumpets and bells, a marching band, and all of you citizens march towards me saying, we are equal, we are free, hooray for the queen. Is that what's really going on? She's telling them to do it. Um, um, I think that, what, what is it? Who dares interrupt the queen? It is I, your highness. I beg your pardon, majesty, but with all due respect, Technically, we are not equal if you are the queen of this queendom, obviously. Oh, right. Good point, musketeer. <coughs> 
I guess I shall be equal to my people, for I am people too. And she takes off her crown, and her friends think about it, and start throwing the confetti. Hooray! R-E-S-P-E-C-T, freedom for all, onward for equality, yippee! Bravo, bravissimo, that was triumphant, Maya the drama queen. You think so? Yes! All equal in talent. Aw, thanks Peggy, thank you all wonderful people. Encore! <laughs> there they are. So, I think she learned a lesson that day, right? I like that book too. All right, you guys, let us um, go on to another story. I have another kind of funny story. It's called Carol and the Pickle Toad, and it's written by Esme Shapiro. Do you know what a pickle toad is? I didn't either before I read this, but... Um, I think we're going to find out. So, Carol and the Pickle Toad. This book has beautiful illustrations, too. There once lived a girl named Carol who wore a toad as a hat. Did you know that some people wear toads as hats? Not all, but some do. I don't know anyone that wears a toad as a hat. In the big city, people wear all kinds of hats. Big and furry ones, tall and red ones, floppy and wide ones, and some wear no hats at all. But Carol's hat was green, big-footed, and as bossy as can be. Carol's toad hat had opinions on just about everything. She would tell her how to bike. Go this way. No, that way. If I were steering, we would be there by now. It's a bossy toad. She would tell Carol what to paint. No, no, that's no good. How about me in very tall boots? <laughs> Do toads wear very tall boots? That's funny. And when they went to the deli, she would tell Carol what to eat. Carol's bossy toad was so loud that everyone would turn and stare. One egg sandwich with a side of flies, pronto, no blintzes. They're too squishy. Yes, of all the hats in the big city, Carol's was by far the bossiest and the rudest. Rudeness, Carol realized, was often a lonely business. With every day that passed, Carol's voice got quieter and quieter while her bossy toads grew louder and louder. Stinky, you can't go downtown. Burp, sit down, no, that is no good. Rabbit, always you, rabbit. You think that too many bagels you always eat. No, and you are ribbit egg. It's, like all, it's all so many words, all these random words. i show you the picture. But you know the old saying, one never knows when a pigeon may come through your window and scoop up your toad hat. <laughs> the toad hat is gone. With no bossy toad around, there was no morning ribbit, no afternoon ribbit, and no ribbit. Good night. Carol tried on other hats, but none of them made a sound. She was so used to being bossed about that she hardly knew what she wanted to do. She tried to paint, but none of her brush strokes felt quite right. She tried to bike, but that certainly didn't go as planned. At the deli, Carol opened her mouth to order, but was too afraid she would get the wrong thing. So one day, the chef just brought her a plate of his choice, a pickle and an egg. Ew, how gross, so stinky and shiny. But then a vision came to Carol, anatomy of a pickle toad. Here, you take eye eggs, Egg eyes, a pickle body, fancy toothpick to stick everything together, and voila, you have a pickle toad. Did you know some people wear pickle toads as hats? Not all, but some do. And Carol's pickle toad hat was the most splendid of them all. The pickle toad's voice was quiet, but Carol heard her loud, and with her pickle toad hat, she ordered all kinds of new things like matzo ball soup, strawberry shortcake, one lock and three lettuce leaves. Carol painted all kinds of new things, not just toads. Pickle toad hats are very supportive. But you know the old saying, one never knows when a pigeon may pass your way and scoop up your pickle toad hat. Oh no, where, where did that pigeon take Carol's pickle toad? She looked over here and she looked over there. She could not find her pickle toad hat anywhere. 
but then Carol felt something funny in her tummy. It felt like it was rumbling, then it shook into a roar. Where, oh where is my pickle toad? Could it be this big, that this big voice was in her all along? Carol leapt into the air and said all kinds of things like, hello, how do you do? And you look like a beautiful bee. Carol found that her voice was quite different from that of her old toad hats. With her big, loud voice, everything felt completely brand new. She biked freely all about town. With no bossy toad around, she painted exactly what she liked. Thank you very much. She ordered as many blintzes as she wanted. Blintzes for my friends, pretty please. The squishier, the better. Carol, ne Carol realized that kindness was never a lonely business. <coughs> there are many fabulous voices in the big city, but Carol's is the most wonderful because it is all hers. There's the pickle toad and the toad together with the pigeon. That, that's probably my favorite new book right now, the pickle toad hat and Carol's big voice. Okay, you guys. Um, here's the next one. It's called Blanket Journey to Extreme Coziness and it's written and illustrated by Lauren Brantz. Are you guys doing okay? It's a lot of books. I have a lot of books today. I have one more book after this. Oh, hello. I didn't see you there. I was too busy being warm and cozy inside my fuzziest blanket. I call this a blanket cocoon. Mm. You might be wondering what is a blanket cocoon? Well, let me tell you, a cocoon is a protective covering. Some insects make cocoons to have safe places to cut, become their grown up selves in. Right, like a butterfly. Look over there, that caterpillar is about to cocoon. Shh. Very quiet. Watch as the caterpillar hangs from that branch. It's making a warm and cozy cocoon. What do you think the caterpillar is doing now? Hello, caterpillar, what's going on in there? I hope everything is okay. You know what's happening. Oh, thank goodness. The caterpillar is okay and now it can fly. Wow, nature is amazing. Hmm, would you like to be inside a blanket cocoon just like me? It says, turn this page this way to extreme coziness. To make your very own snuggly, cuddly blanket cocoon, follow these three easy steps. Step one, find your most favorite blanket. Step two, lay it on the floor. Step three, lie down on the very edge of it. Step four, now roll. Congratulations, you are inside a warm and cozy blanket cocoon. And now that you're here, there are a lot of things you can do. You can snuggle and wiggle and feel safe and warm. You can also close your eyes. And wow, look at me soaring through space and running through the rainforest. Now I'm inside an igloo covered in snow and underwater in the deep blue sea. Now I'm, I'm, I'm up, I'm up, what did I miss? What have you been doing inside your cocoon? Are you cozy and comfy? Are you wiggly and giggly? Are you snug as a bug? I fell asleep. What is going to happen when we leave our blanket cocoon? Uh-oh. Not knowing what will happen is kind of scary. Not knowing what will happen is also kind of exciting. I wonder what I'll become. I wonder what you'll become. We could be anything. Let's see. I'm a blanket fly! Yay! What did you become? A blanket fly too? Or a blanket cat? Or a blanket bunny? Or the best thing of all, the amazing you? I like that. There's a picture of her here. 
author <laughs> in a blanket cocoon. I thought that was pretty funny. All right. I had a hard time choosing today. So I have one more of my favorite books of the week. And it's called Have You Ever Seen a Flower by Sean Harris. This is the last one, you guys. You've been really patient. I hope you like these stories. Have you ever seen a flower? I mean, really. Seen a flower. I mean, way down in the clover with your face down in a flower. Have you ever done that? <laughs> Have you ever seen a flower using nothing but your nose? Breathe deep. What do you see? Raindrops made of honey, the knees of bumblebees, a fancy lady dancing babies at the Royal Jelly Jubilee? Have you ever seen a flower so deep you had to shout hello and listen for an echo just to know how deep it goes? And did you wonder if you wondered, if you wandered down between its golden columns and into its corridors, who you might meet? Maybe a tiny queen? She doesn't look so tiny. Have you ever felt a flower? Do a flower petals, veins, feel like the veins beneath your skin? Have you ever pricked your finger or fallen on your knee and seen the brilliant color of your life? It's all good. Life is inside you. Life is all around you. Now put your hands on your belly and say, this is my stem. This is my stem. Now sip a drink of water and stand very still. Feel it slip and trickle all the way down to your root. Do you feel yourself growing? Do you feel yourself stretching towards the sun, ready to burst and bloom? Have you ever been a flower? I mean, really been a flower? And if you were, would you remember? Try and see. And that's the end. All the colors are so pretty in these illustrations. And all the illustrations and all these books were so great. Bye, friends. I hope you enjoyed those books. I'll see you next week.